Since the dawn of their history, human beings have been fighting over the fertile territories on Earth. There have been countless bloody conflicts between the most powerful civilizations, but some classes of warriors were far above average, changing the course of clashes and even the fate of great empires. In ancient Aztec traditions, these warriors were trained from childhood. During that period, they entered a military school where they learned to handle different types of weapons and combat tactics. Among the different classes of warriors trained in the military schools, the jaguar warriors were the most feared. They wore colorful garments to emulate the image of a jaguar, the largest feline and most dangerous predator in the Americas. Using shields and swords made of wood and obsidian, jaguar warriors spread death and fear during battles. The hoplites were the elite warriors of ancient Greece. They were free citizens who opted for a military career. They only served in times of crisis or even on a full-time basis. During Greek history, the hoplites were extremely important. They were the heavy infantry soldier class, armed with a large wooden and bronze shield, a spear almost two meters long, and a sword. The Spartan hoplites were the most feared soldiers of ancient times. They were subjected to strenuous training from an early age. Many did not survive long enough to be consecrated as warriors. According to records written by the Greek author Plutarch, Spartan women used to say the following to their husbands on the eve of war, Spartan, come back with your shield or on it. This clearly shows that dead Spartans were carried home on their shields. Only a coward would abandon his shield and flee. During the campaigns of Alexander the Great, the Greeks started to use phalanx formations as their key weapon, which resembled a large porcupine moving toward the enemy. The Macedonian phalanx was so efficient that it eventually beat the traditional hoplites. The latter, however, still continued to play an important role in Greek history. During the apex of the Achaemenid Empire, a group of warriors was so fierce and courageous that they came to be called Immortals. The Persian Immortals were a troop consisting of 10,000 highly trained men who served as the king's personal guard or as leaders on the battlefield in war. The name Immortals was given by Herodotus, derived from the tactic employed by these elite soldiers. As soon as the warrior in front fell on the ground, the one behind him would immediately take his place. This gave the enemy the impression that the warriors came back to life soon after they fell. The Immortals took part in the battles of Marathon and Thermopylae, where they faced several Greek armies. They were also part of the Persian troops that occupied Greece in 479 BC. However, when it comes to discipline and determination, no warrior of antiquity could perhaps be compared to the Roman legionnaires. Regarded as the best soldiers of classical antiquity, the Roman legionnaires were the key to Rome's success in expanding its borders, establishing one of the world's largest empires. With a large rectangular shield and a short sword, the legionnaires received training in different military formations. They could switch between attack and defense with great efficiency. The legionnaires' armor had several metal plates that facilitated body movements. These allowed soldiers to withstand long marches and, when necessary, rely on rapid changes of position in battle. The efficiency of Roman legionnaires was tested in countless battles, in widely different types of terrain and climatic conditions. The soldiers faced everything, from the savage Gauls and Germanics to the well-disciplined and courageous Greeks. Many legionaries dedicated their sweat, blood, and lives for Rome's notoriety and glory. Portrayed as bloodthirsty demons, the Vikings were the best warriors of their time. They did not always form organized armies, but the Vikings were nonetheless remarkably effective as individual fighters. Many learned to fight with axes, swords, and shields from an early age. During the Viking invasions that happened between the 8th and 11th centuries, Europe experienced times of terror. The Norse warriors disembarked from their ships and attacked villages and cities, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. England was the main target of the Viking invaders. They conquered and ruled much of the former Saxon territories. 
The fearsome berserkers were among the Vikings. These formed a violent group of warriors devoted to the god Odin, entering the battles wearing bearskins and terrorizing all enemies in their path. The Vikings' reputation spread to such an extent that they went on to work as mercenaries in distant territories. They were hired as personal guards for the emperors of Constantinople and other powerful kingdoms. Coming from the distant Mongolian steppes, the Mongolian knights brought death and fear to the most powerful kingdoms on earth. Led by the mighty Genghis Khan, the Mongol warriors proved to be the world's best archers, shooting arrows at full gallop on horseback. The Mongol cavalry was so efficient in battle that it was deemed invincible in the open field. Not even the massive Chinese armies or the devout crusader knights stopped the advance of the Mongols. Even when they had to fight on foot, the Mongol warriors did not lose efficiency. They invaded large walled cities, destroying all those who opposed their demands. Relying on their warriors, the Mongols created history's largest empire in territorial extension, proving themselves to be worthy of their fame. China's vast military history is filled with great warriors and remarkable military units. In particular, were the warriors of the Qin Dynasty. The Qin Dynasty came to be during one of the most turbulent periods in Chinese history. Basically, all of China was plunged into a devastating war. Several kings and lords wanted to rule new lands and strengthen their kingdoms. With the intention to put an end to this chaotic scenario, King Qin Shi Huang gathered a powerful army of highly trained warriors to start a military campaign against the enemy kingdoms. The skill of Qin's warriors was such that they beat the other six sovereign states that they were fighting for China's military supremacy. With his feats, Qin Shi Huang became the first Chinese emperor, and some of Qin's warriors turned out to be legendary. The warrior class was admired in the distant Japanese lands as well. There, samurai warriors formed the country's military elite. The samurai class originally emerged as tax collectors, but they could also pursue criminals or punish peasants during uprisings. The permanent territorial disputes in Japan led to a series of wars that made the samurai a crucial tool for any feudal lord, making it possible to enhance the skills of these legendary Japanese warriors. Trained with different weapons, the samurai fought mainly on horseback. Their main weapons were the bow and arrow or spear. But the weapon that made the samurai so feared was the famous katana sword. When wielded by a master, it could easily sever human limbs. The samurai took part in countless battles during the Sengoku Jidai period. This class continued to exist until the Meiji period. The abolition of the samurai warriors marked the end of an era for Japanese history. When it comes to displaying strength and efficiency on the battlefield, medieval knights are considered the apex of military evolution in antiquity. Often, they were the offspring of noble families. These medieval knights started their training around the age of seven. They were instructed in the use of weapons, horseback riding, and battle formations. A knight's main equipment was his body armor, tailored for his body. This ensured a high level of protection against the weapons of the time. An ordinary infantryman faced tremendous difficulties when dealing with a cavalry charge. Even when they were fighting on foot, medieval knights could ravish numerous groups of enemies. Much like samurai warriors, knights followed a strict code of honor that guided much of their lives. Medieval knights ruled the battlefields of Europe until the end of the Middle Ages. With the advent of firearms and the creation of national armies, knights lost much of their effectiveness, but their image continued to inspire the courage and devotion of many. Over time, warriors helped to define the history of mankind. They were essential in ancient civilizations. In your view, what was the best warrior class of all time? Write your opinion in the comments.